The McCloskeys have become a household name seen all around the world in viral images pointing guns at protesters. But for the first time tonight, we are getting a rare look at what went on behind closed doors in the days leading up to charges being filed against them. News 4 investigator Lauren Traeger explains how prosecutors and police butted heads over the controversial charges. Through an anonymous source, I received this stack of papers, emails, text messages, even a voicemail exchanged in the days and weeks leading up to Mark and Patricia McCloskey being charged for what happened here at their Central West End home. Now we need to straighten this out because I'm about done with this crap. In a voicemail to police officer Curtis Bergdorf, Chief Warrant Officer and Assistant Circuit Attorney Chris Hinckley makes it clear he's frustrated. Curtis, you need to call me back. I wrote a long email to you trying to ask you a bunch of questions about whatever it is you said. Some were bull. Bergdorf is the lead investigator into what happened at one Portland place on June 28th. Since then, prosecutors charge Mark and Patricia McCloskey with exhibiting weapons, and nine people have been issued citations for trespassing on private property. Emails were exchanged between Bergdorf and Hinckley the very day after the incident. By July, Hinckley was requesting additional follow-up work, including a search warrant to seize the McCloskey's guns. On July 9th, he wrote in an email, They are not going to want you guys rooting around their beautiful mansion, so I suspect they'll give them up. Mark McCloskey's rifle was taken by police from the home. The handgun Patricia McCloskey had was in attorney Al Watkins' possession and turned over in front of News 4's camera. Hinkley wrote to Bergdorf, quote, why the F does Watkins have the handgun? And also writing about Watkins, quote, that guy is a slime ball by many accounts. Many of the exchanges, though, were cordial. At one time, Hinkley wrote, Kurt, be careful. In general, our phones and Twitter started lighting up last night. Several credible threats on Kim referencing Circuit Attorney Kim Gardner and saying he was passing the information about the threats to the FBI. But Hinckley got heated over the probable cause statement outlining the charges against the McCloskeys. Bergdorf created a list of 14 reservations about how Hinckley had written it, claiming they weren't factual, including the use of the term assault rifle, which Bergdorf said was a propaganda term. Hinckley responded, quote, I'm more than willing to remove the term, but in alleging I'm using propaganda, that you've crossed a line. If anything, your changes, conduct, and unexplainable edit in the PC strongly hint of bias or agenda. I think the police did actually a very thorough job. In court documents, the McCloskey's defense attorney, Joel Schwartz, argues it's the prosecution that's biased. In this particular case, a line was crossed and a line was blurred and it created the appearance of impropriety, which is why I believe the circuit attorney's office should not be the office handling this case. He argues the prosecutor's office has a conflict of interest in part because of Hinckley's conduct and also because Kim Gardner's campaign referenced the case in fundraising efforts. There's no doubt they were pushing it forward. There was an urgency and the urgency was called a primary election in the city of St. Louis. A response motion from the circuit attorney's office to the court says, quote, upon review of all the legal standards and facts, there is simply no evidence to establish that the circuit attorney has an actual or apparent conflict in this case and asks that the court allow Kim Gardner and the entire office to stay on the case. A judge hasn't yet ruled. The prosecutor's office did not provide additional comment when News 4 requested it, but Schwartz says the emails, text and voicemail speak for themselves. I do think it sheds a bad light on the circuit attorney's office. St. Louis police today declined to comment because the case is still pending in court. In fact, it's still before the grand jury with the McCloskey scheduled to be back in court in October. You can count on News 4 to be there. Reporting the Central West End, Lauren Traeger, News 4.